so here's another, you know, this is another, you know, little something that'll give you some understanding about the gang life, L.A. or wherever, but mostly L.A., California, because that's where I'm from. But, uh, you know, everybody got the idea that everybody's running around, you know, bang, bang, you know, all of this type of thing. Here's how it goes, man. You know, I got put on deck a long time ago, and back then, it was back then, it's mostly violence when you're young, you know, and you love that shit. You know, I did, you know, you're a young guy, you're basically beating people up and getting in fights. Oh, so, you know, young guys love that. We loved it. But you get older, you find uh, like a niche because you got to find a way to survive eventually. So fast forward, whoop de wop What I ended up doing is because I got to go to college, got a lot of experience, met a lot of white folks in this and that. And, you know, I got to learn about a lot of things, looking around, you know, merchandise, jewelry, all kinds of stuff. So I got to be pretty good. And my family had money, you know, so I knew the prices of things. You know, I naturally, I knew the prices of things. So back, uh, that's kind of what I got into, you know. You know something and the other guy doesn't. You get shit for a good price. And that I started doing that and eventually you get a niche. Be You become the green machine. Basically what that means is in the hood, I set the prices. Because, you know, most cats, you know, ain't even been up out of L.A. Ain't even, there's a lot of cats ain't never been to San Francisco. You see what I'm saying? So they don't travel, you don't see things. So they come up on some shit. And of course, hey man, go get Green Machine, man. Hey, Green Machine, what is this? You know what I mean? I tell them what it is. This is the value of it. Well, who who buys it? I could tell you who buys it. And so little by little, I was that guy. So people were always coming to my house, you know, bringing shit. Usually they needed money. And usually if it was something they shouldn't have, you know, meaning, you know, where the fuck you get this, homeboy? You know, I'll take it off your hands for a great price. I'm talking about like thousand percent profit every time I move it and I know where to take it. So you got some shit. You don't even know what it is or what to do with it. But, you know, Green Machine does. So I set the prices for, for, for goods on the streets. And, of course, you know, I know people call that a fence. Whatever. Whatever you want to call it. I never say I was a fence, but I just say I was a guy that set the prices for merchandise that wasn't necessarily inside stores in Los Angeles. And so... It was a good situation right there. Because you make a lot of money. So even if shit I'm not involved, it'd be some shit like this here. A motherfucker just wants me to come along to look at a car or something else. He may end up backing out of it and I get into it or something else the guy has, you know, because I'm always trying to make deals. If I go, you know, I'm going along with you, but I'm going to see what this guy has that I can come up on. So I always come up on good shit like that. So the, the point of all this shit is that everybody in the neighborhood Crips isn't a killer. You know, kind of fucking backs me off a little bit. When, oh, he's a Crip. Oh, you guys, you label me from the shit you heard on the news. That's not me. I don't do that. If you go back to the neighborhood, they basically tell you that this guy, he moves merchandise. He has shit. If you want something, I can get it for you. If you have something, I can get it sold for you. I'm the green machine. The problem with that became, and this is why I didn't like that name, is because in the ghetto, when you a nigga named Green Machine, put do 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 do, put the shit together, do the quick math. That nigga always has money. You don't really want to be known as a nigga that got money walking around the hood. But when your name is Green Machine, like me, that's what you're known for. That nigga always has money. So guess what comes with that? You better be that nigga who can hold on to his money. You heard me? So you got to have hands. You can never really stop gangbanging. You see what I'm saying? I'm out the gang. But, you know, that nigga got money, so these young gang, who rushed that? Nah, not Green Machine, nigga. That nigga got hands and tools. So, you know, you come at my money, I tell people, it's going to cost you. You can have it, but it's going to cost you one way or the other to get it. 
And so you got to calculate the value. Is it worth it? You know, a couple of nights in the hospital will run you about 30, 40,000. You know, if you that nigga that want to pay it or have your credit fucked up, but it's going to cost you something. So that's a little, little story about the life, you know. And that's why it's such a dangerous occupation. It's because of shit like that right there, you know. Woo, 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 you got a great name. As a matter of fact, Green Machine, that's the bomb that says gangster name I've ever heard of. Green Machine. I didn't even name myself that shit. Some kid named me that. Because, I, you know, he, he, saw, he saw how a nigga was grinding, how a nigga had got his, was hitting his rolling. Like, damn, that dude, every time he, the money just comes, you're like a Green Machine. He started calling me that. I tried to shut it down, but couldn't do it. So you got to fucking stay with the tools. Make sure niggas don't try to jack you for your ends, you know? And that's, and that's the life it becomes. So, you know, that's the glamour of it. Even being a gangster with a lot of money, it puts a target on your back. You got to watch out because people in the ghetto always need one thing, and that's money. So you the nigga named Green Machine, they know you got it. So you're talking about women hollering at me, being real nice. You know, everybody loves you when you got money in the hood. But everybody don't love you, depending on what you do. So you got to, you know, you got to share your money. Like if I'm at the grocery store and a young couple of neighborhood crips behind me at the liquor store, rather, you know, hey, man, just, you know, pay for that shit, too. You know, it's not trying to show off. But the problem about the hood is. You can't be stingy and rich in the hood. If you got money in the hood, you got you to gotta take care of people or else they'll get jealous and then they'll come after you. You know, you got to lay money down in the hood. So you got to have it. You got to have more money than you need because some of that money you got to give away for your own safety so you don't have niggas hating on you. And so to make it through South Central L.A. named Green Machine walking around with money, I don't got to pat myself on the back. You know that's a bad motherfucker right there. He has to be. Cause I ain't getting out. I, I, man, hey, I've been in the game nonstop. Never, never been DP'd in my whole damn life. I've done that shit. We used to call it Buster Fridays. Catch up to niggas that been slipping, you know, and something has to happen. But it's never happened to me because I've on my, I've, you know, I'm been, been the guy with money. You ain't gonna DP this nigga with money. He's cool. You see what I'm saying? So. Something to think about, just a little story. I don't know what it means to you, but I think the more people start getting into and, and being a fan of this cripping, it, it helps to have an understanding of it, you know? So you're not judging people the wrong way. You're not looking at, you know, OGs like me thinking that I'm going to kill you and you shouldn't be my friend because it's dangerous. You know, I'm not in that business. Everybody finds their niche. Yeah, there's, I know hitters. I know some cats that'll slide through and, and, and take care of some business. I know guys like that, but that's not me. However, they just lump you into one barrel and they think that I'm some type of psychopathic killer, which is not the case. I'm more likely the guy that same thing it applies to gangsters, non-gangsters. What do you want? What do you have? What do you want to buy? What I could find you, whatever. Everybody's looking for something and I can find it. And that's why I'm the green machine. But it's a lonely life. It's a lonely life because you can't have people around when you when you have money. And if you don't have them around you, hey, what, what's, what's the matter for you? What's wrong with you, nigga? What, you don't love a nigga no more? See what I'm saying? So it's, it's that type of thing. So, you know, a little longer than I wanted to go. But it gives you a feeling for how things are. That It's like... Uh, the first thing you need to seek out of anything is an understanding. Before you start being a fan of some Crips or some Bloods, whatever, understand the real the real life. If you got the young ones, those are the dangerous ones. Motherfuckers from 30 and under, they'll kill you without a question. Me, I got too much to lose. I got the house, I got the cars I got to get rid of, I got properties out of state. You know, I'm not going to do anything to you. The young guys do. The guys that need money. You understand how it works? I don't move from my house to do anything in protection of myself. It just costs me money. So that's it in a nutshell. Just a little bit of, of the situation, you know. And I'm not the type of nigga that's going to tell you to stay in school. 
Because school, I'm not with that school shit. I've been there. I've been to school. I went to college. I played college football. I know all about it. It's bullshit. It's a waste of fucking money. You're better off being a gangster. Like it or not. Matter of fact, I'll end by telling you this. True story. Eyeball fucking witness. I'm telling you. Looking you right in the fucking eyes. LAPD asked me not to get out of the rolling 60s. Right there on uh, on Creek John Slauson, right in front of uh, uh, Nipsey's, Nipsey Hussle's place. Like two in the morning, they caught me. I was trying to get away from these niggas. Hey, hey, I'm like, ah, shit, they see me. You know, you could act as bad as you want, but when LAPD calls you, you might want to walk over because you don't want them chasing you. So I've walked over and they started asking me questions and that's all they do. They want to get all your information, find out who you are. So I actually whoop de whoop did all that thing and talked to him for a minute. And told them my perspective on situations around L.A. And one of them told me, I'll never forget that. He told me, you know what? I hope you never get out of the rolling 60s. They need guys like you in there. You understand me? Because of the shit I just told you, man. I'm not the gang slide. Now, I'm about business. I'm about money. You know, I'm about legit business. You know, I only become a gangster when business goes bad. Long as you're fair, I'll never be a gangster. Soon as you fucking go fuck that contract up, well, then you got to meet the old me. And that guy is not the green machine. My first name was Loki Loke. When I was young, it was Loki Loke. And if anybody knows what that means, that ain't a nigga to play with. He's bragging about getting with the business, and that's what I was like. But now, not so much. You see? So... I was going to end with some good message, but I'm not that nigga that's going to tell you to stay in school. I'm going to tell you to chase, find a way to chase money. School, waste of your fucking time. You know? The fuck you going to go to college for? What are you going to do? You know? Fuck college. Learn, learn to make some money. Matter of fact, that's what you go to college for. They teach you to make money. Why the fuck go to college if you could figure it out already? Uh, you know, I went to college, but they didn't teach me how to make money. Turns out I already knew from this Crippen. All they did is teach me how they steal money. They took my money, didn't really teach me anything. They just gave me a title, you know. And I worked in the fucking world, too. I worked for NBC, as a matter of fact. I worked for Rupert Murdoch's family. Yes, I did. And I came right back to this Crippen because... All that shit, you get out in the business world, all they do is rip you off. And then they talk shit about gangsters. The best thing you could be is a fucking gangster. And then adjust and be like me, you know? I don't commit any crimes. But I have the education, the wherewithal to fucking look after myself real good in my family. I know how to make money. College isn't going to teach you that. Get with this cripping. Neighborhood or don't bang. You heard me? And that's pretty much it for right now. But y'all is G'ing a motherfucker if you just listen and replay that shit. Because I'm a real live motherfucking crip. Not like them niggas that be showing their faces all over TV. How the fuck you gonna run from the cops all day but have 60,000 viewers on your YouTube channel with your fucking naked ass ugly face on there? Fuck no. Y'all don't know. You, you don't need to know what I look like. You need to hear what I know. You really want to know what I know. I ain't going to tell you all that shit, but you'll get close. OG Green Machine, nigga, and I'm out, you motherfucker.